back. Um, I was here, I don't know, a couple of years ago, when you guys were in the other building. Yes. Um, and I had so much fun. I was like, Phil, you got to have me back as soon as you can. No. And then, uh, of course, I've been talking to Tom. Tom, thank you for having me. Joe, um, but, yeah. but you're welcome. Joe. Joe. It, 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 I'm sorry. Joe. I'm sorry. Every, every Tom, Jake, and Joe, you know that's <laughs> So, ah, ah. No, Joe, thank you so much. I really thank you for coming, it. Robert. Yes. So Joe tells me that I'm going to be on YouTube. Um, so uh, I'm going to keep the cursing and nudity to a minimum. <laughs> Although I can't promise one of those things, but you know, we'll see. Um, what I wanted to talk about a little bit is, um, well, let me just take a quick survey here. Who has heard of a firewall? Good, most of you. Who can describe what a firewall is? Okay. <laughs> Good. All right. So, basically, uh, what a firewall is is the network appliance that allows certain traffic in and certain traffic out. That's the very basic term. The idea is to keep your your network safe. But what I have been kind of one of my missions has been is to create human firewalls. And a human firewall is a little bit different than a piece of equipment that is a firewall. What I mean by human firewall, and you'll, you've seen this term, I didn't, I didn't come up with that word, uh, it's, it's a word someone else came up with, but what it means is like being smart enough and, and doing the right things to keep yourself safe online and just wherever you might be you know, using your computer. So I think one of the things that's probably the most, um, what, what's the way, I, most missed are passwords, you know, because you know, I, I don't know about you, but I've got a ton of passwords after a number. You know, um, I, I literally probably have over 2,000 passwords that I have to remember. Oh so, in order to stay safe, especially, you know, because, you know, I do this as my profession, I, you know, it's a duty for me to keep things safe, I have to have very long, very secure passwords. So, I'm just going to go through a really quick little, um, uh, introduction and how to create secure passwords and what a secure password is and then I'm going to open up the floor to any questions you guys might have for me. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, good. So, just as, a, as another quick survey, um, how many people here would say your password is longer than six characters? Like, okay, good. Longer than eight. Keep your hands up if it's longer than eight. Longer than ten. Longer than twelve. <laughs> well, but here's, but here's the thing. Okay, so, Good on you for if your password is longer than 12. But here's the thing. Passwords should be memorable. They should be something you remember. And what's been happening, or what's happened in the past anyways, is that people have been creating these passwords that are long and weird. You know? Um, HQ, uppercase Y, exclamation point, five, underscore, I'm like, I'm never going to remember that. So, um, what the newest studies have been showing are longer passwords are more secure. The, and shorter passwords are, are very easy to, to, to crack, to guess. So um, there are there's certain special rates that you can build with computers that can guess 32 billion, with a B, passwords a second. How many passwords can you do in a second? <laughs> But when you think about the number of combinations of the different characters, you know, it doesn't take very long and when you start adding characters, it starts becoming really hard, even at 32 billion passwords a second, to guess it. So, I want to illustrate something for you here. So, this is a, uh, a website that you can go to called howsecureismypassword.net. Now, um, I don't really know who runs this website, you know, so I wouldn't suggest you put any of your real passwords in here, but I'm going to just try some that, you know, aren't going to compromise anyone's bank, you know, sort of thing. So here's just a regular password. I'm just going to put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? And what this tells you is how fast one of those password cracking rigs can get through the password. Because it's so it's so short, it's so easy, it's like it's like a hot knife through butter, just right away. So now, now I'm just gonna add a nine. Still doesn't still doesn't really help, right? It's a sequence of numbers in a series, very easy to guess. Okay, good. So now let's try something different, right? Um, someone give me the name of a household object. 
Refrigerator. No, okay. Just refrigerator. It's easy to remember, right? But here's the thing that this doesn't really tell you about is that there's another type of an attack. Um, that when, whenever, you, whenever you're talking about guessing passwords, it's, it's an attack of some sort. Um, if you're just going to try 32 billion passwords a second, that sort of thing, that's considered a uh, what's called a brute force password, right? You're just like trying to brute force it in, that sort of thing. There's another type that's called a dictionary attack. And a dictionary attack uses common words. You know, usually shorter words. Um, refrigerator's a little bit longer, so it might take it a little bit longer. Um, if it was just doing a brute force, it would take two years. Okay, so good. Um, now, we're going to do something. We're going to leave refrigerator in there. And we're going to add um, another word. So, somebody give me uh, a, a type of pet. An animal. Chihuahua. What was that one? Chihuahua. Okay. It's longer than my chihuahua. How many years? Eleven trillion years. Eleven trillion years. So okay, so now we've got a password that's significantly more secure, right? I mean. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I think after 11 trillion years, I'm fine with my password being known. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I'm saying they'll put your passwords in here. <clears throat> but the, the idea is it illustrates how long it would take and how secure a password is as a very general rule, right? Okay, so now refrigerator chihuahua, as much as we might be endeared to those items, um, is, is kind of long. The point is that you want a longer password. So now I'm going to try a shorter password with all the crazy characters, right? So I'm just going to do Q, 2, at, H, uh, W, let's do underscore, equals 2. Now, it almost, it almost took me longer to think of that password than it would take So computers are exceptionally good at cracking these passwords. Because to them, an underscore is the same as a as a uppercase A, lowercase A. It's just it's just a, it's just a series of, of zeros and ones, right? But to human beings, it's like okay, underscore A, oh, oh. you know. And then what ends up happening is we start using the same password for everything. And then when someone unscrupulous gets your one password, they've got access to your bank, your email, your you know whatever, your online uh, electricity bill, whatever it is. So, what security experts have been um, trying to get people to do, and what I've been teaching uh, people that, that I coach, is to come up with a phrase. Now, the nice thing about a phrase is you can get a long password with shorter words. So, I'm just going to show you one of the tools that I use, another tool that I use. This is a password generator. Now, I'm just going to summarize this really quick. And so, just to give you a little bit of background, um, this website was developed by a guy who is an art, a, a comic artist. He does a comic called XKCD. It's kind of a nerdy, you know, comic. He does all these like stick figures and stuff. But he's also very smart. He's a mathematician, a scientist, all kinds of stuff. We use this at uh, Postcard Mania to develop passwords for for our users so that they're memorable but also very secure. What this is saying is it's going to generate three passwords. There are three words um, that will be I think it's in here. between three and five, um, three words between five and eight letters long, and it's going to add two numbers afterwards. So I'm going to create a few of these just so we can illustrate it. Okay. So I'm going to make that bigger. So here's six passwords. Three words between five and eight characters. House slept rhythm 35. You know, maybe those aren't words that are necessarily go together, but it's much easier to remember than eight underscore H blah blah blah. And it's longer and more secure. And if you just capitalize each letter at the beginning, 
makes it, it makes it mixes the character case. You know, some places like your bank, they might say, oh, you need a special character. You know, put an exclamation point at the end, or put something at the beginning of it. You know, a hash symbol, or whatever it is. Um, Norway cannot school. I mean, I feel like that's yet to be proven, but we'll see if Norway can school or not. Um, built neighbor arrays, 07, could light observe. So you can come up with these, these types of passwords all day long. You know, just think of, think of words that, you know, are between three and five, or five main characters, or whatever. The idea is you just want longer passwords. It can even be um, song lyrics, you know, um, a, a sentence, something like that. Anything that, that's along with the password. So I'm just going to take this first one here. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it in the house secure as my password. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be um, embarrassed about what uh, my password's going to be in 145 trillion years if someone finds out. OK, so good. Now, um, it's important that you want to have your password different for every site that you um, that you have anything you care about, right? Your email, your bank, things like that, right? Credit cards. So this is why. Okay, so uh, I don't know. Does anyone know what this word means? P W N E D. It's not really a word. It's an, it's kind of a Basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a term that means, has, has my information been compromised? You know, it comes from like video gamers and stuff like that, you know, if like someone's really good. Oh, I've got, I've got a hand over there. We, you're off the mic back there. Oh, did I actually turn off? Use this one. Hello? Testing? Nope. Switch it on. How's this? Did I turn it off on accident? Hello? Hello? Oh. Yes. All right. Okay, now I'm deafening myself like Phil here. Uh, okay, I'm going to back up a step. Did you hear what I was saying about um, what this word means? No. Okay, I'll, I'll back up then. So this word came from like the video game community, and like if if someone was like a really really good player and they kept like you know killing your character over and over, then that person you know would have pwned you, is what they call it, or owned. It's like. But also in security, it means that you know your data has been compromised. Someone else has all the keys to your kingdom, and they, they own you. That sort of a thing. So I'm going to put in um, just a let's see. I'm trying to think of a. Actually, I'm going to use an old email address that I don't have anymore. You put your email address in here. This means, and it shows you, that my email address, and in this case passwords, were stolen in some sort of a, in some sort of a hack. So this particular one, in January 2019, a large collection of credential lists, um, which means emails and passwords, uh, was discovered being distributed on a popular hacking forum. The data contained almost 2.7 billion records. Including 773 million unique email addresses alongside passwords. Um, those addresses had, had been used on other breached services. So, now I'm not, I'm not showing this to, to scare you, um, but what I'm, the reason I'm telling you this is that, you know, if your password or an email address was in this list on, I don't know, a particular website, but you use that password for everything you did, now all of those services are at risk. This also, is, this also highlights the, the need to frequently change your passwords, or at some frequency. However, because there's you know, 773 million um, unique email addresses in here, the chances of you personally like, getting attacked on this are very, very low. They're very low. But, these go for the highest bidder on, on websites. You know, people sell them, they give them out freely, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, let's see what else they have in here. Okay, good. Um, 
see it. I'm trying to think of other email addresses that would be like really. Um, okay, yeah, let's try this one. This is a very, very, very old email address I used. I didn't use it that much, so it's not. Um, it's actually not. It's only been in two reaches, but. What's interesting is that February 2019, I hadn't used this email in 15 years, maybe more, maybe almost 20 years, but it's, it's, it was still found someplace. Anyone want to, anyone want me to put their email address in? Try my old Bainus 9 address. What, what is it? It's Joe dot W-I-S-I-N. SKI at baynews9, the numeral 9, dot com. Uh oh. Mm. Oh, I know. oh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been five and a half years since I've worked there, so yeah. there you go. Wow. Do you use the same password? Is that the key? Well, that's part of it. Because, you know, credentials are not just the password, it's the, it's the email address and password combination. You know, if you have an email address, okay, fine, you got someone's email address. You know, maybe they can send you a bunch of spam or whatever. Um, but if they have the email address and password, now they can start doing things. Because the first thing they're going to probably try is, good, let's go to gmail.com and try that password there. And if it opens the doors, well, then they've got the keys of the kingdom, right? Because all of the, uh, the password reset requests get sent there. All of your you know, statements get sent there. They can start sending emails as you to people you know and saying like things like, you know, hey, you owe me money or something, you know, whatever they want to do. Question? So when you go to this website, is this part of the XKP website or is this a standalone website? This is a standalone website okay. and it's called have I been pwned.com? You don't have to have the, the exactly. You just. Uh, apostrophe. No, you don't have to have the apostrophe. It's just. It's just. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Have I been I'm just going to pop it in here. Okay. Like that. And what do you do if you have been? Well, the, the thing is that if you're, if you're keeping your, your password um, discipline in, you're changing your passwords regularly, then you don't really have to worry about this too much. You know? So, but if you if you haven't changed your password in you know three or four years, change it. <laughs> you know, uh, another question. If you use something like um, a song or like the title of a song, "Bridge Over Troubled Waters," or something, are those easier to crack? No, because um, phrases. Now, my thought is at some point that phrases will be easier in the distant future, but not not now. The way the password cracking technology is, because here's the thing, it's actually not that smart. It's actually like, they put so much effort into how to do this thing, but it's actually not that in, of an intelligent thing. They're basically just taking a, a stick and banging it around inside a trash can until something falls out. I mean, it's, it's a really like, you know, kind of, um, uh, you know, unclever way of doing it. They put a lot of high technology into just guessing a bunch of stuff. So the longer the password, the better. Foreign words make any difference? No, uh, foreign words would actually be better. I mean, prob probably, um, but yeah, well, they would de they would defeat most dictionary attacks if they were based on English uh, dictionaries. You know, but the the key is that you want to have longer, just longer passwords. Anything to make your password longer. Most people are really bad at memorizing, you know, symbols and numbers and long strings. But but phrases have been proven to be just as secure, functionally secure. Is it safe to go on that site and put your this particular one, yes. Um, this one, because here's the thing, right? Your email address is there's you can't you're not giving anything away really. Right. You know, we've already got 773 million other addresses along with yours. <laughs> so here's another. Here's some. Here's one of the other solutions that I personally like because I have over 2,000 passwords that I have to remember. Um, this is a, bl a browser plugin called LastPass. Um, good. Anyone else use LastPass? Good. Now the cool thing about LastPass is that it will create passwords for you, and it'll create crazy passwords that you never have to remember. All you will have to remember is your one master password, and my my master password is 26 characters, but it's a phrase that I can remember, and I can pull it off and just do it right away. What if you forgot? 
if you've forgotten it, um, with LastPass you might be able to do a password recovery, but that's the, that's the only one that I would suggest writing down. I would never suggest writing down any other passwords any place. And if you're going to write it down, write it down, put it in an envelope, like just a regular envelope, seal the envelope, and put it in your fire safe. Yes? Is that still free? They do have a free version. Um, I pay $12 a year for the premium version. I think the only thing it gives you, gives me different than the free version, is I can access it on multiple devices. So I can get it on my cell phone, my computer here. I, I use seven computers at any given time. So I'm all of them. Oh, <coughs> this system creates passwords for you. But yes. when you go to, to different organizations and things, they have different requirements for That's their. Right. Yeah. Their password requirements. That's you know, right. Whether it be they have to have uh, you know high uh, capitals or a low key or numbers. Or yeah, and, and also different lengths as well. So this this actually accommodates for that. I'll show you how that works. So um, let's see. What's uh, let's just try Gmail. That's uh, probably gonna log me in. Okay, uh, let's see, use another account. Well, I'm just going to sign you back into my own account. I just want to see a password field. Okay, so now one thing I want you to take note of here is that it's already entering a password for me. It auto fills the fields. Right. So I don't have to remember which one it is. I just have to be logged in with my one master password. Um, I think it lets me stay logged in for two weeks. And then it asks me for the password again. Now, what's nice about this is I can go into LastPass and I can see what that password is if I want to know, if I've got to type it someplace where it's not auto-saved. Um, but it also lets me generate new ones. So, it's got this little icon here. And I can just right-click on that, go to LastPass, generate secure password. And then to answer your question, you can choose the length. You know, let's say I want a really, really, really secure password, 100 characters long, and it gives me all the different um, combinations here. Upper and lowercase letters, that's a mix, lowercase letters only, and numbers, and symbols if I want. You can put your own password. You can put your own password in as well. But if you wanted to do, like, if you want to be, like, fully, fully secure on all sites, you would have different passwords on every single site, and you only have your one master password to get into everything. Now, you know you have to also consider how um, how secure the thing is. If it's your, I don't know, if it's uh, I'm trying to think of a site that might need a password. But it's like a bank account would probably they have like you were saying a specific. Um, you could, then you could put that in there and go, okay, you, they want one uppercase letter, they want a number, and then they don't want any of those back symbols. Right. Yeah, kind of and there are some places that are like, oh, it has to be between 15 and 26 characters. Yeah. Okay, good. So, you know, put it right in the middle or something like that. But, um, you know, you definitely, like, anything financially related, you want longer passwords, you want better passwords. Yes? I, I want to say that there is a probability that somebody could hack me. Mm -hmm. That means for these 120 million should be adding the probability to attack me or you. That means will be higher. You know what I'm saying? I have a password of four letters for mm -hmm. 20 years. Okay. I didn't have any problems. It's a Romanian word. B A N I. Okay. I have it. I keep it. I don't use it so much. It's uh, netzero.com. Okay. okay. That means uh, what? You explain here, but we have to add more probability to be attacked by someone. I think. Well, I think I, I think I follow what you're saying. Like, yeah, there there is a certain amount of um, it, it's called uh, security by obscurity. Yes. Because it's like, well, you know, I've had my credit card numbers taken many times. It was never because I lost my wallet. It was never because. Um, someone took a receipt out of the trash. Mm. It was always, every single time, it was because someone stole, you know, Citibank's, you know, a Citibank employee laptop and got 13 million credit cards and mine was one of them. Mm. I mean, yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, the, 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 the probability is low, but, you know, it's like, I don't know if you've seen the, the, the uh, movie Spaceballs, 
Oh, there we go. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> so, you know, there's this, there's, there's, this, there's this scene. It's a, it's a science fiction. It's like a parody of Star Wars, right? And they're going to attack this, this planet that has this big shield over it, and, and the air is precious, right? They, they, they don't want to lose their air. And then this big ship comes in, and it's like a vacuum cleaner. And they need a password to get in, and it's one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and then like, what kind of idiot picks a password one, two, three, four, five? And he's like, I can go change my pin number, you know? <laughs> sort of a thing. I think Mel Brooks says, well, that's just on my luggage. Exactly, it's a <laughs> luggage password. So, I mean, yeah, it depends on how, on how important the thing is. You know, if it's just, you know, I don't know, uh, like if, you're, if you use stock photos, and it's a free stock photo site, and everyone wants your information and whatever, fine. You know, use a four-character password if they'll allow it. You know, but, you know, if it's your retirement account, if it's your bank, if it's your, you know, stock, you know, trading account, you want a long password. Yes? But knowing what we know now, just on today's news, mm -hmm. Tallahassee, their payroll, was hacked for $498,000. How could that be? I mean, if the IT people in Tallahassee know all that you know about protecting, how can they still be hacked? Well, that's, I mean, it's an assumption that they know what I know. You know, um, I, I, it's, a, it's a very good question. You know, 80% of security breaches are inside jobs. Either, either deliberate or completely, like, you know, just accidental. You know, um, I've had to go back and recover files from people who have deleted them when it's like, you know, oops, I deleted a file. Well, yeah, it's a security problem, you know, but they had, they, they had permission to use those files and they deleted it. And it's like, okay, well, that's a problem, you know. But only 20% come from the outside, you know. Um, yeah. So to kind of summarize what you're saying, uh, to answer that, if someone wants to say hack, uh, a local little credit union here, mm -hmm. all they have to do is be a cleaning girl, crawl under a desk, plug in a Wi-Fi router, and technically you're hacked. Not necessarily. Not necessarily? Not necessarily. Um, the banking uh, industry has a little bit of a different... Um, well, that's well, funny. Well, because here's the thing, right? Like, the first thing I would do in a, in a, a small credit union, especially that's, like, open like that, um, is I would set up my switches to only allow certain MAC addresses to have access to the switches. So you plug in your Wi-Fi adapter and it's not even going to get a link light. Okay. It's not even going to turn on. You know, um, I, was, I, was, I, won't, I won't mention the company, but I was uh, being interviewed at a place that was a, it was a huge investment firm. And they were looking, you know, at hiring me to do some things. And um, you couldn't plug anything in without them knowing the MAC address and you having uh, using the password to access their network. It was extremely secure. You, you couldn't plug a printer in without that. Wow. Did I see another question over here? Yes? I just put my email address in your site there now. Yeah? And it tells me I've been born, and it says, seven breach sites and found no pastes. What? What have I, what, what's happened? Have I lost everything or what? No, no, and, and yeah, again, I'm not, I didn't show that to scare you, just to, just to illustrate that, you know, this data is out there, you know. One of the things, probably the, the biggest risk you have from that is that you're going to get more spam. Yeah. Okay, you know, I don't know about you, but I've kind of got to hear with spam and I still get it, fine. But change your passwords if you think that, like let's say for example Dropbox, in 2012 there was a big, um, uh, breach with Dropbox. They lost millions of addresses and passwords. You know, my password's changed several times since then. So, okay, fine, I don't care. But if one of those breaches was one that you think the password's still the same, like there was one from January 2019, let's say you set the password in November of last year and it's still the same, well then, you know, you're going to want to go to that site and, you know, whatever, wherever, wherever you use that password, change it. Start with your banks, start with your retirement accounts, things like that. So, if I were to have one password for everything, mm -hmm. and in my case, what I tend to do, because I find it easier, I go back to my youth in the UK, and I come up with an address, mm -hmm. this with upper and lower case, and I, could I have that one address, 35, whatever, for everything? If you're going to use one password for everything, if you're going to do it, make it a very long one. You know, make it a very long one. Um, <coughs> I, I would say, some of them do, but that's, I mean, 
ideally you want to have different passwords for every site that you visit that, that's secure you know again if it's um, you know like um, like a stock photo site you're just downloading free stock photos you know fine make it an eight character password use the same password there a bunch of times I'm going to show you another tool though for those types of sites in a second here but yeah I, I would not ever suggest you using the same password for like your different banks and things like that you wouldn't no. Tell them this one of your stories about like Barry and how he got hacked and how what they because it's very random, right? Like you, some of you guys were talking about like how how is this going to affect me and right? You don't know if it isn't, but you also don't know if you're going to get into a car accident tomorrow, or you don't know like it's just. But to be prepared, like having airbags in your car and having other things makes you less susceptible to get it. It's just. Uh, like you said, sometimes it's just random. They just happen to pick it. You're just a number to, to whoever it is attacking, so they don't know you personally. But whatever data they could get could be whatever. So it's just a, a precaution to, you know, protect yourself. It's almost like, you know, statistically, if you have insurance, you're less likely to, you know, get into a car accident. You're less likely to, mm -hmm. you know, pass away, right? Because you're prepared, right? Being prepared makes a big difference than to not be prepared. He was just telling me a friend of ours had his, uh, he worked, he didn't work for Facebook or anything, did he? Very, Very. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, he had his email hacked to the point where people, his customers was getting emails addressed as him saying, hey, you know, or whatever it was. So, you know, he had to figure out, is it me? Is it the, is it the, it, was it the carrier, like gmail.com? Like, who was it that got hacked? And he, of course, went to the expert and went to him. So he was able to, like, you know, pick up, but it was so random. It was just a guy, you know? And I've never been hacked, but, you know, my husband who deals with computers does, you know? So it's just very random, but it's always better to be I, safe than sorry. My emails, my, I've never been hacked. No, but, I'm not saying But, I, but I've come across you know, a lot of yeah, you know, stories. Right. You, you, you know, know a lot of people. It's true. And we'll get emails from at Postgre Mania from customers, and it's like, this is a really weird thing, and their password's been, been hacked, and they've got to go and change it. Um, I saw two questions. I think I saw one over here first, though. No? Well, uh, what you're saying definitely holds sway, because most of these Netgear routers or whatnot uses those phrases of long words, yeah. you know, for their actual password for the routers. So, that's right. you know, that's just showing you that that works. Or yeah. You sell the equipment. Yeah, it's, I mean, this, to, to get a little bit theoretical here um, for a minute, um, the reason is that the longer, the longer those numbers are, the harder it is to get to those numbers. Have you heard of like, um, you, I'm sure you've heard of like 128-bit encryption, 256-bit encryption, stuff like that. You've all, you've all heard of this? Okay, so what that means is you have, uh, when it's 256-bit encryption, you have 256 binary positions, zeros and ones, okay? Each of those numbers, each of those zeros represents a number. The first position, the first zero represents a one. The second position represents a two. The third position represents a four. It doubles every time, is, is the point. And if you think of it kind of like, um, well, whenever you have, like, whenever you turn on a position, you go from zero to one, then that number becomes active. So if you have one followed by a bunch of zeros, or a bunch of zeros in front of it, that's just the number one. If it's one zero, that's the number two. I know this is getting really crazy. But here's the, here's the reason why I say that, is that it's not just... 256, you know, from 1 to 256, it's 256 uh, to the power of 2. So I started doing a little bit of researching here. I'm going to try to keep this as, as non-theoretical as possible, but someone did the math that even I don't understand, but they figured out that if they were just to set up a computer to count from 1 to the maximum number that 256 bits represents, it would require all the power of the sun to exhaust it. That's not hacking it. That's not doing anything but counting from one to that you know, huge number. Now, when you go into your bank, your bank's SSL certificate, the security certificate, is 2,048 bits. We don't have enough stars to count that number. We have one star. <laughs> so, anyways, one more tool. Um, uh, okay, question. Can you use an identifier or the name of the bank or something, and then a whole bunch of and then a phrase behind it? Use the same phrase behind every one, but to have the identifier in front different. Yeah. That would be that would be good. You just have to keep the uh, the phrase, you know, very very safe, very secure. Yes. The problem is is not password necessarily. It's the amount of accounts that you have. Right. But how many how many 
uh, accounts do you have and how many passwords, different passwords would you require? How do you keep track of all these accounts? I can't think of anything, but you have to mark them down someplace. Well, that's that's where LastPass comes in. Yeah, so I'm just going to show you. Have LastPass. Yeah, if you have LastPass, and there, there's other ones, but you know, without giving you any passwords, you can just see all the passwords that I have here. I mean, these are these are like really insecure ones. Each one of these represents a password. Um, so okay, here's something I haven't used in forever. Okay, so this is how it looks, right? So it saves the URL for the website that, that where the password is, is, is needed. The name, this is just for me to, to remember what it is. It doesn't currently have a folder, but I can put it in a folder to organize it. The email address I use for that, and then the password. If I click this little I, it's like an I icon, it shows me the password. Now, I have, you know, I don't know how many passwords in here, a ton of them, but um, they're all like this and it's secure. You know, um, this is one of the things that one of the reasons why I went with LastPass specifically is not even LastPass has my passwords. They encrypt the password on my computer before they send it to their servers, and so they don't, they couldn't, they can't tell me your password. When I put in my password in here, my master password, it's encrypted before it's sent to them. It's encrypted on my computer using their software and sent to them, so they don't even know what it is. It's worth money. It's worth money, but they give it away for free. Is there any other companies other than LastPass that let you do multiple devices that are free? Robo, Robo, uh, Robo Form Light. It's called Robo Form. Yeah, I think, and I think we're getting pretty close to time. But uh, yeah, I'll take, I think I think there's a question back over here. A uh, gentleman in the orange shirt. Did you have another question? Uh, yeah, uh, that's basically the same as, as uh, John. Are there any other? Why do you feel that uh, LastPass is the ultimate pa uh, password generator? Well, it's not. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it just a password the ultimate password generator, but it's a good password vault. The reason is like because of this, and this is this is just my thoughts on it. Right? Okay. Um, they're a company. They you know they're being paid to do this. They're, they have a they have a, a vested interest in security. You know. Um, I use software from companies that, that they give it away for free, but there's a rule of thumb. You know, if you're if you're not paying for something when you're online, you are the product. You know, that's why Google's free, right? When you search for you know ceiling fans, Google knows. You know, they can get you down. They can they can figure out your gender, your age, your income level. You know, how many cars you have, what pets you have. They have all of that data. They're selling it. I don't care if the, if the internet knows, or if Google knows, and I've got cats at home and whatever, oh, fine, whatever. They're the best search engine on the planet. There's nothing to compare it. But when it comes to security, I'm not sure that I want to be the product. You're better off to pay for a that, password. Is, yeah, or at, least a, or at least a company that offers a, a, a paid version. You know, they have a free one as well. So try the free one, see what you think. I had a question over here with Scott. Yeah, briefly, uh, can you touch on the double sign-in securities? In other words, for either emails, like or banking, like in our bank. Are you talking uh, about two-factor? Into the bank, it has to bring our phone yes. the code to put in. And does that really uh, expand the security? Some say it does. Some say it doesn't. Uh, let me explain it just for those who, and then um, I will have to I'll have to call it a call it a day. Um, okay. I might be able to answer your question quickly, but then. Well, it's a, uh, probably the only, I'm the only one that has this question. So. Well, I'm not sure about that. We'll, we'll see. But anyways, what, what uh, Scott's talking about there is what's called two-factor authentication. So the way it works is you, um, you go to a website, you plug in your email address, you plug in a password, and you plug in probably your phone number and email address. And then when you, when you go, if you enable two-factor authentication, you go to the website, you put in your email, or put in your username and password, and you either get a text or email that has a one-time code that has an expiration of like, let's say, five minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. You punch that in, then it lets you in. Here's the good thing about that. You have to have access to that device in order to get that one-time code. Now, if your email password has been compromised, then the security isn't as good. You know, texting is arguably a little bit safer. Um, the best one I'm aware of is like the Google Authenticator because there's an app that goes along with that. So you've got to log into the, the app and you've got to log into this other thing and then you get the one-time code and it has to be on that device. So that's a little bit more secure. 
Um, I still think that there's better ways to do it, but I don't. I've not found one yet. So, and then you have one one last question. Um, I've forgotten the master password on last pass. Oh, you have. Yes, I have. You can try doing the um, the password recovery. If not, yeah, just. It works. Yeah. How do you get into password recovery? So you go to log in here. I don't know if this is. I've never had to do this. I've done it twice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I know it's possible. <laughs> okay, good. So there's this link here that says forgot password. Yeah. So I just went to log in, went to LastPass, log in, and then click forgot password. It asks for email address. Yeah, and then you remember which, you know, if you have one email, that's the one you use for your LastPass. That was my problem. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, I've got one email I use for. Okay, yeah. I have two, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to wrap this up. Um, one, one thing I did want to um, uh, just. Um, I want to introduce my wife again for just a moment. Um, we have kind of a, um, I don't know, we kind of hit a big, you know, milestone in the last uh, in the last few months here, where I've been with her for more of my life than I've been without her. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, she's more than just my wife. She really is my partner. She's my best friend. Um, you know, it's. I'm not to get too sappy on you, but she was my first kiss, my first girlfriend. <laughs> um, so, and I just wanted to, she's, she's, she's got this whole new endeavor that she's getting into. She's really making a, uh, uh, a mark for herself. She's helping a lot of people. Um, so, she's just going gangbusters. I just want to have uh, her come up for just a minute and just really quickly tell her, tell you what she's doing. Okay, exciting. Really, really two seconds. Isn't he the best? Yeah. I've, I've literally known him again, like half, more than half my last time, my lifetime here. And um, I've been with him longer than my family, actually. <laughs> and he is like my family. He is my best friend, and he is one of my biggest supporters. So I love him dearly. Um, really quickly, I just want to tell you. Uh, by the way, can we just give him a hand? Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> me about changing my Amazon password for I don't know how long. I just now have duplicated why that's important. <laughs> I've had it for 20, I've had it almost as long as I've been wow. You're right, I need to change that. Okay, good. Anyway, um, basically what I do is uh, I, I basically work for a World Financial Group, which is a, a finance company that basically helps everyone. We're kind of changing the world in the financial industry in that we don't just help the super wealthy elite, we help everyone. So we can help, that's one of the things that my biggest plus point, and I'm sure you've seen it with Robert too, how much he wants to help people. I really love to help families. I was a teacher for 16 years. So my biggest drive is to help families. So one of the things that we do is we educate families on finances and we help them kind of plan for their future goals. And then the second thing we do is we help people uh, like my mother who are in retirement and need help. So I also help with like estate planning, I help with you know, 401ks, I help with just to make things so that we can make things more, you know, so you can pay less taxes and also kind of if you feel like your retirement you know, uh, account needs a little bit of help, I can do that. So I have like some major you know, experts behind me that are just like phenomenal in the industry and what we love is that we're not you know, money driven, we're more help oriented and that's what we love to do. So if you know anybody uh, who could use our help, let me know. I'll put my. I'll leave my information with Phil. He has everything. I didn't think to bring any cards, so I wasn't really thinking of coming and like kind of giving you my card. I wasn't thinking about it. But Phil's got my number. I can even put it up on the board if you guys want. The other thing is, my husband does a. You know, he does an amazing seminar here, right? He also does an incredible financial seminar that we put on every Saturday and Thursday evening. If you're interested and you'd like to come to that, let me know. And I will give the address and you can come and, because he's amazing at what he does, right? He, everybody got something out of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. And um, if you guys want me back, let, uh, let Joe know. We do. And uh, I, would be, I, it was, I had so much fun today. So thank you all for having me. Yeah.